now uh, human health and diseases we will talk about the immune system the system which deals with providing immunity protecting us against infections the immune system of the body is mainly involves the major parts that are involved that is lymphoid organs which are primary can be of two types primary and secondary lymphoid organs are those organs which will form and store the lymphocytes about lymphocytes i have already talked about in my previous lecture now immune cells the second component of the immune system immune cells that is the lymphocytes or even our other macrophages uh, the white blood cells monocytes those are the immune cells soluble molecules like antibodies the antibodies which will be produced by the b lymphocytes then also some additional tissues which are known as lymphoid tissue so we will talk about those now the lymphoid uh, organs the primary and secondary so primary is mainly the ones which are involved with origin of lymphocytes two are there bone marrow and thymus as we can see in this figure this is bone marrow so bone marrow and thymus these two are mainly involved with uh, the formation and maturation of lymphocytes formation and maturation of lymphocytes maturation a thymus is involved with maturation whereas bone marrow is involved with formation as well as maturation and for that matter we should always remember bone marrow is the site where all blood cells are formed then the secondary type of lymphoid organ are the ones uh, which a where the secondary lymphoid organs are the ones which interact with the antigens to become effector cells that is after the maturation of b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes they are uh, released into our circulatory system okay they will be formed in thymus mature in thymus released into the circulatory system mainly the lymphatic system and that uh, they will be carried and stored in certain regions like say these are the lymph nodes lymph nodes these are tonsils the tonsil glands okay tonsil gland this is a secondary lymphoid organ lymph node is a secondary lymphoid organ spleen is a secondary lymphoid organ pears patches secondary lymphoid organ appendix these are secondary lymphoid organs so the lymphocytes once formed in from the th in the thymus they will move through the lymph vessels from the bone marrow they will move through the lymph vessels along with the lymph it will be carried out carried and then they will store themselves in these secondary lymphoid organs that is spleen lymph nodes tonsils pears patches and appendix it will be stored there and whenever antigen attacks the body it can enter through any of the pore of the body it enters into the body then these particular secondary uh, organs secondary lymphoid organs will act, get activated they will get activated the lymphocytes will get activated and the reaction starts reactions which we have already discussed under acquired immunity so such reactions will start occurring primary if for the first time the antigen is entered the body secondary if it is a subsequent attack so all those such reactions will occur in the secondary lymphoid organs then mucosa associated lymphoid tissue in short it is abbreviated as malt these are these type of lymphoid tissues they are found in the lining of major tracts inner lining of major tracts like say the respiratory digestive or urinogenital tracts so accordingly we have different types okay we have different type nasal associated lymphoid tissue gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue so mainly what is this mucosa associated so if in the uh, even in the gastrointestinal tract okay there will be some tissues which will be responsible for producing or releasing the immune cells so if any antigen reaches there they will provide additional response additional response uh, besides the normal like the whatever our lymphoid organs are doing so that is mucosa associated lymphoid tissue m-a-l-t these are masses of lymphoid tissue then autoimmunity now what is autoimmunity our body has the ability to differentiate self and non-self cells which are belong to our body and which do not belong to our body they have the ability that is why they attack only the immune cells the lymphocytes uh, b t they attack only the 
antigens. They do not attack our body cells. But sometimes what happens, the B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, they fail. They fail to identify which one belongs to the body and which, which one does not belong to our body. They fail to differentiate. So, result in what happens, the immune cell starts attacking its own body cell. And that leads to many problems or many symptoms. It, you can call it as a sort of disease. Okay, and why does it happen? It happens due to wrong signaling occurring in the body. Genetic abnormalities. The gene is not functioning properly. The gene of the immune cells, they are not working. They are not signaling in the proper manner. As such, they fail to recognize which one they should be attacking. Which one they should be attached to so that they will kill. So, they fail to do that. So, they keep on, they get attached to any other body cell normal functioning body cell and uh, thereby lead to malfunctioning of the system. Example, rheumatoid arthritis and Addison's disease. These are two types of autoimmunity and autoimmunity diseases, autoimmune disorders, they are usually uh, recovered, usually the recovery is self-recovery. So, only supportive treatment is given in such cases. Next, we come to allergy. Now, what is allergy? Allergy is the exaggerated response of our immune system, hypersensitivity. When our immune system reacts in a very uh, exaggerated manner, in a hyper manner, okay, to any antigen that is entering the body or reaching the body, reacting with the body, that reaction is known as allergy. Now, allergy can be against antigens, the antigens which we specifically call as allergens different people can be hypersensitive to different items it is our genetic makeup that makes up this uh, the immune system to be more reactive against certain elements existing around us some can be uh, very reactive against even small uh, animal scratches pollen grains whereas the second person may not be okay when it comes in contact with the skin some injections like say insect bite, some insect bites, okay, some uh, the pollen grains, they fall on the body. Then we take some medicine, we take some food, like say some fruits even, even when we consume some fruits, even then we get itching, okay. So those can be the exaggerated response. Our body is trying to reject that element immediately. Body is not accepting that at all. Okay, so such type of reactions are called as allergic reactions and the agents causing them to be specific are called as allergens. Now, the mainly here we, are, we have shown the or I have shown the respiratory system. Okay, allergy affected in the respiratory system. So, what happens? The uh, allergen enters, immune system reacts very uh, aggressively. It starts reacting, result in a lot of mucus will be produced which the mucus will go and uh, make the nose stuffy, the sore throat itchy, it will start itching. Why itches? Due to release of chemical histamine and serotonin. Now what happens whenever an allergen reaches the body, okay, if it has entered into or it is in contact with the skin, always the epithelial layers, they are followed by the areolar tissue. Areolar tissue has mast cells. The mast cells, they have the ability to release two chemicals, mainly histamine and serotonin, whenever they are stimulated. These mast cells will be stimulated by the presence of some allergens. Now, these allergens, what will they do? They will stimulate the mast cells. Mast cells starts releasing serotonin and histamine, and these will flow into the blood. The blood will get the signal that, yes, there is an emergency situation in that particular region be it on the skin or internal uh, epithelial layers. So, what will happen? Immediately, there will be a rush of blood to that region carrying the immune cells. Rush of blood, that is why usually redness is seen. And due to release of this histamine and serotonin, more and more release, more rush of blood, more stimulation, more histamine release, more itching. So, itching will ultimately stimulate more of histamine release. So, it is somewhat like they are walking in both ways more histamine more itching more itching more histamine so finally that itching process uh, that uh, release of a lot of mucus in that region a lot of chemicals in that region ultimately leads to some adverse effects which which really uh, produces some very massive symptoms 
then how to treat it so antihistamine or adrenaline steroids can be given to the person who is uh, undergoing such a reaction so antihistamine will counter the effect of histamine and thereby gradually uh, put it down so the symptoms will also gradually reduce that is allergy and the antibody associated with allergic reactions is IgE. IgE is usually released whenever an allergen enters our body. So that type of antibody, the B lymphocytes will start releasing IgE type of antibody. So that is about the immune system uh, which we have, we have to discuss and this is mostly, uh, it is related to both innate and acquired system. Okay, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.